and welcome to TSB Weekly. This is your tech startup podcast for Thursday, September 3rd, 2015. Uh, we are recording here once again at the Communitech Hub in the Beam Room. It's Beam, blue? Beam Room. We yep. get a lot of blue rooms, it seems. Yeah. I don't know if that says anything about us, but... Uh, it's very tech color. I sure. Think. It's supposed to inspire creativity, maybe? Yeah, that's orange. Oh, is that orange? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What, is, what does blue inspire? I don't know. We conversation. Let's, let's, let's hope that it's conversation. Yeah. Uh, let's do some introductions. My name is Darren Conley. I'm a local tech entrepreneur here in K- Kitchener-Waterloo. Uh, joining me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, fellow tech entrepreneur, Stephen Campbell. How's it going, Stephen? I wish I was getting smarter, but I'm not. <laughs> How do you know you're well, not getting so smarter? Well, so yesterday, I uh, took a, whole, a full glass uh-huh. Uh, of cold coffee into my car. Right. And uh, had to slam on the brakes. So most of that coffee, uh, 98% of it was splashed all over my dashboard and oh, all over my car. That's unfortunate. So this morning I got up and again took a cup of coffee without a lid on it into my car. Uh, so I have little wet marks on my jeans. Right. Because I held it this time, determined not to spill it. Right. And I right. was, yeah, not smart. Yeah, I think, I think, think coffee as you get older, you get issue. smarter, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Well, uh, joining us today is a man who I don't see any coffee stains on <laughs> so far. It's still early. Uh, yep. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Fayez Elfar from Voter. Um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing Voter right. You are. I, I'm pretty sure I got the name right. <laughs> it is. You, you got it right. Excellent. How are you doing today? I'm Ms. doing Fayez. very well. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about Voter. I know you've uh, let me check out the demo and uh, play around with it a little bit, but um, is it is it available to the general public at yes, the moment? Yes, it is okay. open. We've been in somewhat of a, an open beta for the last few months, you know, making a lot of improvements on our platform. Right. To give you an idea about what Voter is, mm-hmm. briefly, uh, Voter is a new social polling and voting platform mm-hmm. with very heavy focus on the social aspect of it. So in a nutshell, people ask questions in poll format, they provide the options, and receive votes based on those options. Okay. Very, very helpful when it comes to decision making on anything that has to do with your anything from wardrobe to political opinions. As a business owner, this can become very valuable to you mm-hmm. if you're uh, targeting certain market segments, et cetera, et cetera. So, like I said, we've been in somewhat of an open beta for the last few months. We have a stable platform now, and we're starting to expand to other platforms as well. Hmm. So this cool. is like the, yeah. the Magic 8-Ball, but it actually has somebody on the other side of it. Right. With, <laughs> telling, <laughs> with some g- real answers. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah, really exactly. cool. Yeah. Um, and how would you differentiate yourself from some of the other kind of voting options out there, like uh, SurveyMonkey or... Um, you know, I, I, I've seen a few apps here and there uh, for eliciting feedback from people, right? In a few ways. In yeah. a few ways. We do have several features that actually differentiate us from some of the examples that you've given. Yeah. Uh, our major feature that would do that is something called our districts feature. Mm-hmm. And we gave it the name districts to kind of maintain that democratic feel, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as a user of voter, whether you're just an individual user or a business owner, you get to create your own district, which is somewhat of a group. Mm-hmm. But you can make it easier into a public district or a private district. And henceforth, you know, target certain segments, certain people. You're, you're, if you're a company owner, for example, you can create one for your employees, mm-hmm. receive feedback from them, et cetera. So that's one thing. The other thing that I mentioned was our social interaction. Mm-hmm. So our user base is actually really diverse. We have anywhere between 50 to 60% of our users across the Middle East. Mm-hmm. And the rest are in North America and a few others here and there. Sure. So... The voting cycle is actually very interesting. When I'm waking up here, I'm getting votes from people back in the Middle East hmm. and vice versa for them. Sure. So it's, it's a constant 24-hour feedback yeah. uh, feedback loop that's really interesting. A lot of the people that have started using voter early on are now really close friends. Hmm. And I kept trying to push that uh, social aspect of voter from, from the very beginning. So we received feedback from the people that were using it. Mm-hmm. A lot of our features were determined by our users. So I actually implemented the model that I that I suggested to you sure. in Voter. So that's but, it was a good proof of concept for me as well. And how does social interaction happen inside of Voter? I mean, I've I've participated in polls and filled out surveys and things in the past, but I've never got to know any of the other people filling out the survey or or even the survey creator necessarily through that process. So. Um, what kind of mechanism uh, does does voter have to encourage the social connections that way? Again, we have several. Uh, okay. So we have a very active commenting section. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really enjoy data analysis as, mm. as, as a person. I love that stuff. Sure. So I keep track of what's being used on voter more, more than others. And our comments section is 
one of the most active. Yeah. And that's how people really get to know each other. And obviously you have your follow, unfollow architecture with the notifications, etc. Mm -hmm. We try to keep an active um, uh, email chain as well to let people know about, you know, interesting polls, etc. Sure. And sure enough, looking at some of the data um, right after emails or right after a new poll with, uh, with somebody who has a lot of followers uh, is posted, you'll mm -hmm. see a big spike in usage. Hmm. So that's that's really telling me that the social nature of the application and the platform are really viable. Hmm. Yeah, because that would change depending on who is asking the question, right? Exactly. Because I would be more interested if somebody that I knew was asking right. it or so that social aspect uh, makes sense to me. And then if I know that you asking the question, then I know well more about you because of the questions you're asking, right? And uh, you've hmm. actually hit the nail on the head. People are really that. starting to get, I mean, these, you have to understand these are complete strangers and now yeah. they know so much about each other from very simple questions. Mm. And like I said, the questions can, can be very, very controversial and really make you think. Sure. So some of our users have received that feedback from the rest of like, I hate your questions. I don't want to answer them. And now some of them are actually including that <laughs> option in their, in their uh, poll. So you've right. heard of folder scrunch already. <laughs> I see. Wait, don't give away the ending of the podcast <laughs> to forget you heard that that's coming up later. Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so, so they're including that option. Like I hate your question. I, I hate don't your questions. Answer. I don't want to answer, which is kind of like <laughs> abstaining from voting. Yeah. Right. Sure, uh, sure. So it, it is, it is really fun. It's very fun. Do you have all all wow. of the above as well. <laughs> uh, you can you can <laughs> define your own uh, yeah. you can define your own options, right? So whenever you're creating a poll, sure. we have several types of polls. Um, you know, you got your ratings, A B questions, mm -hmm. text options, uh, mm -hmm. picture options, etc. So you get to define your own options, and you can do whatever you want. We do sure. have a strict terms of service policy and a, a right. strict privacy policy. I like to keep things clean and on an even keel there. Sure. Uh, but our users are very understanding of that. No, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, please. <laughs> One of the interesting things I found when yeah. I was doing some research as a college student um, on SurveyMonkey was it depends on how you ask the question. So do you guys give any, um, any uh, help or tips uh, as far as not asking a leading question or um, asking something in an unbiased way? Right. So we actually do have a small tutorial mm -hmm. on the best way to ask questions. Hmm. But if as a user, if you go into voter and you start reviewing some of the polls you can obviously organize them by most popular etc yeah. the most popular polls are always well formed the options are are you know valid mm -hmm. and a lot of people are now including the none of the above all the above etc so you can lead uh, by example here's right, some really exactly. good examples of good polls that are exactly done. yeah and uh, in fact um just a few days ago, uh, one of our new users posted a question that only received like two or three votes because the, ves the question itself wasn't uh, proposed properly. Mm -hmm. Right. Almost immediately, he republished with uh, a better, better, better question formatted format, question. Right? Yeah. 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 So there's that really cool. powerful ad where there's a blind person sitting uh, asking for some change outside uh -huh. and everybody's walking by and their sign says, uh, I'm blind, please help. Right. And a woman walks by and picks up his sign and changes it and puts it down and walks away, and then everybody starts donating money to him in a, a hurricane of cash, right? Yeah. And then she walks up later, and he feels her shoes, and he knows it's her again. He says, she says, what did you do to my sign? And uh -huh. he, she says, I said the same thing. I just changed the way I said it. And right. what she had written was, uh, it's a beautiful day, and I can't see it. Hmm. Instead of I'm blind, that's help, powerful, right? That and is it is powerful. powerful. So yeah. words are, you know, so uh, that makes yeah. sense with just tweaking a question just a little bit, and then you can open the floodgates. Exactly. Sure. And I think that voter, uh, similarly to other social platforms, is a matter of usage. The more you use it, the more you understand the users on it. I can post a tweet right now as a brand new Twitter user, for example. It won't get a single favorite, even if I have a thousand followers. Sure. If, I, if I phrase it wrong, right? Yeah. So this is not necessarily something that is uh, uh, specific to voter. Yeah. This is just social interaction in general. Sure. What are you guys finding are the, what's the burning question? Because of our varied user base, we do get a, uh, quite a bit of political questions. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this hasn't been true for the past, say, month or so, just because I guess things are a little bit calmer in the Middle East right now. Sure. They're, they're on the tipping edge. Mm -hmm. But whenever a big event happens, you always find a few questions about that. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our very active users have a certain stream of questions that mm -hmm. they focus on. We have a couple of users that are very active that you know, are really into fashion, 
they'll always post questions about, hey, rate this dress, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Uh, we have a couple of users that are very interested in social issues. Mm -hmm. And again, you can always find out the number of polls in a particular category or in a particular district. Sure. And going back to the districts feature, we actually provide a list of um, pre-existing districts. So whenever you're publishing a poll, you need to assign, assign it to a district or mm. category. Right. Uh, but again, you can create your own. So and a district, then, again, yeah. is like a target market? It's a, it's a group. Okay. It's yeah. a group, right? Uh, it's a group slash category. So it, it, it functions doubly so in that you're categorizing your, your poll if you're using one of the existing uh, districts that we, that we provide. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or let's say, like I said, uh, if you're a business owner and I want to create a, a district for my, for my business only. In fact, I do have a district on voter called Founders Corner. Okay. Right. So it's by invitation only. Mm -hmm. You can request. Uh, you can request to join, and I would approve and disapprove those those requests. So you can sure. make it open or, or closed. So for uh, for content that's related to a specific topic or to a specific company or, or group that way, yeah, very cool. Um, a couple things I wanted to mention. First of all, you know, I'd heard an interesting statistic. This was um, a few years ago when I myself was living in the Middle East, but um, they were talking about uh, the ways that people use kind of social media, especially Twitter, in different parts of the world. And often in North America, it's either for, um, like, celebrity gossip, <laughs> a lot of it, and things like this. Whereas in, in other places, like in the Middle East, um, it's uh, Twitter, Twitter, at least, is often more used for political uh, commentary or opinion or statements, right? But, but it's used more for trying to change, trying to quote-unquote change the world rather than you know, kind of idle gossip, which I thought was interesting. So I wonder if the fact that you have such a large user base in the Middle East um, contributes to having discussions and polls about more meaningful topics simply because of the way that social media is used differently in different parts of the world. I think the question yeah. is a little bit premature. Yeah. I don't want to define what voter is right now. Right. Uh, I want to wait until we gain a certain number of users, hit a critical mass, and then let it decide what it wants to be. Sure. Our motto, like I mentioned before, I think, uh, is let the crowd decide. Right. And I really want to instill that into voter from the beginning all the way towards the end. Right. If voter is going to become a platform where people and musicians come in and want to compare sound bites, I have no problem with that. Sure. Right? Yep. Again, uh, once we have a larger data set, larger number of users, I can create those uh, filtering mechanisms that are available in larger platforms like Facebook, like Twitter, et cetera. But we're, we're simply just not there yet. Sure. I've been following uh, a very agile methodology when, when starting this entire venture. Yeah. So if I don't need it yet, I'm not going to build it yet. Yeah. And I've, it's been quite successful because at any given point, we're very flexible. I can just simply pivot, go towards what the crowd wants, mm -hmm. and they love it. They keep coming back for more. So it's sure. working. I wanted to ask you real quick, too, about um, you're talking about that social interaction aspect of the of voter. Um, you know, it's it's become a bit of an online joke when you're looking at like comments for blog posts or especially on like YouTube or something. You see a lot of trolls and kind of flame wars and stuff going on. Um, that's how, where all the good stuff happens, right? That's In the right. Well, section. it depends, right? <laughs> it can, YouTube it can, is notorious for this. Well, and yeah. it can get toxic, and so um, you know, how does how does voters kind of manage things to avoid you know toxic interaction rather than beneficial or you know productive interaction? Right. That way? So I'm I'm actually the uh, chief engineer at Voter, so I built right. this entire platform myself, and part of the process was building a detection engine. So I, I built this one myself. Sure. And frequently it scans our comment section our poll section, the uh, notifications to me mm. uh, are not necessarily like 100% immediate, but mm. within the, the first five minutes of bad content being published, I'll get notified about it. Sure. And then we have mechanisms in place to warn the user of, of repeated offenses. We have mechanisms to ban certain users, and I've unfortunately had to exercise that at one point. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, Just for our listeners, Fayez is uh, quite um, fit. Yeah, he's a he's a big dude. Are, but are you he's hitting a big on me, dude? Yeah. But in the but in the online world, I think. So if he shows it, up even in a virtual <laughs> sense, I bet your avatar's got big pipes too, doesn't he? It's just my picture. <laughs> you know, long sleeve, it's, just it's flexing. All good. Oh. It's all good. Yeah, I think in the virtual world, things are 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 a little more uh, 
But we're all on more even platform. Although he is do the administrator think? of the app, so I mean, you do get to choose who gets in and who gets out. Yeah, he's already uh, beneath as, the as per our terms of service. Of course, of right? course. So right. we, and you there, know, we I think welcome, there has to be a certain amount of that, of right? Yeah, you, you have to. You have yeah. to. I mean, I'm not staying away from controversy. Right. What I am staying away from is, as you mentioned, trolling, right. making people feel bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, one key thing that we do have in voter uh, mm-hmm. is the ability to post anonymously. Right. With with some checks and balances in there. So you can post an anonymous poll, mm-hmm. but you're not allowed to see who voted on it. You mm-hmm. can only see the results. It's your poll. No problem. Yeah. Okay. You can vote anonymously, but you're not allowed to participate in the comments section. Right. Right. So that immediately uh, really cuts down on a lot of the junk that is potentially there. And again, sure. like I said, we do have back-end filtering mechanisms yep. that will notify me if, if anything is kind of shady. And we'll just right. take it out. Sure. Now, for those who are just listening and haven't had a chance to see or try out Voter yet, can you just walk us through the process of what it might be like for uh, a new user to create a poll and uh, you know go through that, that process? Sure. Yeah. It's, uh, I try to make it as simple as possible while maintaining flexibility. So it's a three-step process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. You, create, you, um, you choose your category, mm-hmm. whatever district that you want, you choose your poll type. And, and, and then what you build types are available, by like the way? I, like I said, we have our rating polls. Uh-huh. And you can obviously provide media with that, um, a picture or something like that. Or a, any of the polls can also contain links, references to videos, etc. Okay. And you have your text option poll, which is straight up three, Type to, in some three to five text options. Uh-huh. And then you have your true, false, yes, no, A, B polls. Again, those are modifiable. You can also attach pictures and, and links to those as well. Sure. And then you have your picture polls, which are really popular. And, so, and how, how does a picture poll work? You post a picture and... Post uh, uh, three, or, or up no. to three pictures. Well, oh. actually, three pictures is the required. And, and I had done a little bit of psychological study on why to uh. choose the number three. We can get to that later if you okay. like. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But three seems to be that magic number where people are still indecisive, mm. but have made a decision about, oh, I'm going to take one of these three guys. Oh, okay. So, so you're um, voting on a picture, right? I exactly. choose this one over this so one. So that's, okay. the, that's the... Uh, Publishing of the poll. Yeah. Whenever you launch the application, your landing page is the main feed. Right. What goes on the main feed, we can talk about that a little bit later as well. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, everything that's published is on the main feed. Mm. Right. And then you would simply click on one of the polls. If you've answered the poll previously, you can see the results. Mm. You can see the comments. You can Mm. see who voted on the poll. If you haven't, you're only allowed to vote. That's the only option that you get. Gotcha. Obviously, you can vote anonymously, as I mentioned. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, you're not allowed to see the results just in any election, right? Just yeah. like any election. Right. You're not allowed to see the results until you voted. Gotcha. You want to you wanna participate in the democratic process, you get some type of reward. Yeah, of sure. course. Fayez, is there any type of branding available to me, or is it all sort of branded voter? Currently branded voter, but that's, again, something that I've built from the ground up. Mm-hmm. So white labeling voter is nothing more than two or three days of working with, with you and I. Right. Right. Telling me exactly what you want, providing your corporate identity to me, and me building you something that is specifically for you. So you and could, again, like uh, a, yeah, I, sort of a brand could come in, like Coca uh, Cola, yeah. and say we want this as our uh, right. platform, and you could use exactly. Yeah. yeah, awesome, absolutely. And not only that, I mean, you can do it two ways. For a company as large as Coca Cola, for example, it might actually be more useful to them to to address the general public. Sure. Mm-hmm. So currently, I have the maximum number of votes per poll set at five thousand. It's an arbitrary number. I just picked it out of a hat. Yeah. For you to get really valuable insight in the world of statistics, you need somewhere around the 10,000. Now, right. again, for me, that's just a flip of a switch. Yeah. Okay. For a company like Coca-Cola to come in and really want to gain insight, all they have to do is just tell me, can we make a 10,000? I'll say, yes, we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we'll provide them with that extra feature because they're, for example, a corporate client or a preferred client. Sure. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that's also available to me. I love the fact that... I can be as flexible as I want mm. uh, with voter to accommodate any of our important users. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, listen, we're, we're going to have to take a quick break here just for our uh, sponsor spot. Oh, and, you don't have uh, to run to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I took care of that before we started recording. But uh, we are sponsored by Igloo Software. And um, Igloo, as far as we know, is still looking to hire talented individuals uh, who might be uh, interested in working at Igloo. Uh, Igloo does a, their, their main product is a intranet platform that runs in the browser. Correct. And um, so take a listen to this uh, little spot here and see if Igloo might be the kind of place for you. I actually left Igloo for a while and came back because 
You get the sense of family, the sense of working as a team. It's a really inspiring place to work. People can be who they are when they're in the building and, and we're all working together for a common goal. It gets a little crazy at times. I have a very, very large collection of rubber ducks. My first day, out of nowhere, I just got shot by so many nerve guns. I mean, we get beer every other Friday. There's nothing wrong with that. You could be here for a few weeks, but if you have a great idea and we think it, you know, it'll work, we'll run with it. Where you can go forward and pursue your own dreams. They're empowered to do their job. Our culture is all about team. It's, it's really great and it's something that you kind of strive for in a company. If you have a great idea, we're going to implement it. That's why people love working here. Did you get that? That was great. <laughs> it was awesome. Yes, absolutely. Um, now, getting back to the conversation at hand, and for those who uh, might have forgotten and during that 30-second uh, spot there, we are still here with Mr. Fayez Alfar from uh, Voter, um, talking about Voter, a uh, mobile app for uh, eliciting feedback, doing polls, and, uh, and with that wonderful social component that uh, set you apart. Um, you and I had talked yeah. about uh, the idea for the thousand. Do you remember that idea? I don't, but I've I've talked Darren about so I, many ideas. Yeah, we have so yeah. many entrepreneurial ideas that bounce back and forth. So um, <laughs> we just had uh, we just participated in Startup uh, Weekend Guelph. So we right. heard a whole bunch of pitches. <clears throat> One of the things I was constantly hearing from startups that we talk to every week is um, we're at the uh, we're beta testing or we're at the stage now where we're g- gathering customer feedback. So I always thought if you could have a thousand people in your pocket here locally that are developers, designers, business, uh, business people, entrepreneurs, yep. um, that all gave feedback to each other. Um, and I, I just picked the, it's more of a marketing thing. We were going to yeah. call ourselves the thousand uh-huh. and you just offer feedback to each other. So if I want feedback from the thousand, I have to give feedback, I don't know, three times. So a three to one or something like that. Sure. Just it's really rough, but it's almost what you've done with well, voter. Well, the thousand right? can yeah. now be powered by voter. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if, if you're Absolutely. interested, I'm interested. <laughs> the, the thing that we were asking each other was, what's the number, though, right? And you said right. it's 10,000, where 10, you can actually 10, get some information. But that's, that's if you want, right? like, that's if you want something statistically significant right. from the general populace, right. I think. Right? And this isn't really the general, like, it wasn't a target market thing, the thousand. Yeah. It's people that are in the trenches with us every day yeah. and, you know, sort of mentors looking out for you. And, as and that really makes kind of changes things quite a bit because, sure. I mean, you can. You can gain good opinion from just 50 people. You're still asking 50 human beings. Yeah. Right? So, for example, let's say you have uh, 50 engineers working with you, mm-hmm. and they're being asked an engineering question. Yeah. I would take that 50 over 10,000 non-engineers right. or, or non-SMEs, right? Yeah. yeah. So, again, that's one of the drivers behind that district feature, which is you know creating something that, that can be private, that can be targeted towards X number of people. X individuals. Sure. So maybe the thousand is just like a district and voter. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> That's and, essentially and could you monetize means. districts then? You can. <laughs> Again, you can. Uh, not currently. It's it's part of our business model for yep. growth. Right. Uh, we've recently made an acquisition uh, in a young and very very talented engineer out of McGill. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dimitro. Uh, Sazanov and uh, I've heard of him. Well, he's sitting right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's very well bearded. I have to admit. Yes. Yes. Very intelligent young man. It was yes. very impressive. I met him during one of my trips to Montreal and uh, won cool. me over immediately. Made wow. Him, made him an offer, and we're in the process of handing over all growth aspects of voter towards him. Wow. Now we have a stable platform on Android. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And we're going to be expanding to other platforms such as iPhone and web. Right. Uh, but I needed to free myself up to do all that stuff. Of course. Yeah, so Dimitro is going to be taking over all that. That's awesome. awesome. Well, welcome aboard, sir. <laughs> welcome to the team. <laughs> now, Dimitri is the, the first addition to the quote-unquote voter team, yeah. I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's, before, we, I do want to talk about like the growth of voter and where things are headed, but if you don't mind, let's take things back a little bit first to uh, <laughs> where things got started and, uh, and maybe where you got started in um, being involved with this, where the inspiration came from, and so on. So, um, so you've mentioned that you've done all the development work yourself Correct. thus far. Okay. Um, what what kind of work were you doing previously before uh, 
before Voter came that, on the scene. That question doesn't really apply. I actually, uh, Voter's my second company. So I, oh. my, my first company is still active and I'm still full time on it. Mm -hmm. okay. I run a consulting company. We do computer and software design for mainly nuclear reactors. Wow. So that's that's my uh, <laughs> that's my first company. <laughs> and that's currently active. I actually had to take a little break to conduct this interview. So oh, thanks sure. for the break. <laughs> yeah, no I problem. Appreciate it. I had to step out of the nuclear reactor for a <laughs> second. So it, yeah. it really is like having two full time jobs. And sure. uh, I definitely don't mind it. If you don't believe in your own idea, nobody else will, right? Of course. Sure. So if you're not willing to put in the effort... Uh, yeah. Then, you know. uh, did you... Is your training, your past training in computer science or engineering? My or master's what? is in computer science. Yeah. I have an undergraduate degree in computer engineering, okay. uh, political science, and a minor in mathematics. Okay. So what was the nice problem? You you were wanting to see something changed, or you wanted, your voice wasn't being heard, or what was the... I'm, I'm pretty yeah. loud. So <laughs> yeah. that, that, that was never a, a problem. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, um, it's kind of a... It's a, it's a two-pronged question, or rather answer. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, I'm a big car fanatic. Okay. Mm. I, I love cars in mm. all shapes, forms. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I would say, I was in the process of trying to buy a car. I always had a list of cars that I would definitely want. I just could never pick one. And finally, I just said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to email a whole bunch of people and ask them what they would like to see me in. Right. <laughs> right. And that, and that an was, and that was it. well, yeah. it really was. And that was yeah. the birth of Let the Crowd Decide. Yeah. Sure. That's where the idea of voter came up. So now what are you driving? Oh, well, I got a couple. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't decide and, uh, for you? <laughs> well, it was, that was a strange. I did actually end up uh, buying, my, the first vehicle I bought was, was the one that was chosen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, this was, the Jaguar uh, X XF, of course, uh, the luxury yeah. edition. So that, that's that's the one. The yeah. a pair of aviators with the window down. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely do that. There are the aviators right there on the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then later on, I made another fun purchase, but uh -huh. we'll, we'll leave that till later. <laughs> <laughs> to that <be> was continued. <laughs> that was the uh, that was uh -huh. the driving force behind the creation of voter <laughs> the quote-unquote driving force right? yeah right. Well. no pun intended uh, sorry was, about that. i didn't even catch that it's yeah, usually yeah. steven that makes those jokes yeah, but I yeah apologize. we appreciate yeah, i apologize no, i didn't good. mean to steal your thunder <laughs> oh no it's all good the it's thunder the will lightning come round later. actually yeah <laughs> and okay so that was that's the one prong yes that's the the second one is uh my background i originally come from jordan mm. uh born and raised there mm -hmm. sure and uh Historically speaking, at least in my personal history, Jordan has been very stable mm -hmm. in a surrounding that is not. Right. And uh, we really had the opportunity to express our opinions, whereas others didn't. Right. As I started seeing more and more users coming in, the features that they were requesting really... And, and this, uh, this is all within the first three or four weeks, by the way. Yeah. So one of the first things that was requested was the comments section. And even though I was vehemently opposed to it, believe it or not, and now yeah. it's our most popular... Right? Yeah. So again, you can't know everything. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so now voter is really part of me. Mm. I enjoy listening to people's opinions a lot. Mm. And I disagree with about 99% of them. Sure. <laughs> but just, just the process of giving people a voice, a platform to stand up and say, this is what my opinion is. And everyone's vote counts equally. Wow. So that's a big thing, obviously, right? In any poll, any, anybody's vote counts. Sure. But in the real world, it doesn't work that way. Right. Now, how long has Voter been around for? When did you first release your... Uh, we actually launched build? at the beginning of the year. Okay. Uh, but like I said, we went through about three months of constant feedback, constant new releases. Hmm. Uh, didn't really push the platform on people very much until at least it became stable. How, how did you get the first few users? Just with your own circle of friends kind Correct. of thing? Yeah. So it's a very typical startup story, family and friends. Yeah. Uh, You're uh, utilizing an agile methodology, you said? Yes. Yeah. What uh, kind of iterations are you doing? Using three-week sprints or? Weekly. Every <laughs> Sunday. Okay. Every wow. Sunday. Up until about two and a half months ago. We okay. were doing releases every single Sunday. Did not miss a single Sunday. Wow. And our users were just anticipating it. Like, right. I mean, they really were. I would get emails whenever it's Monday in, say, for example, Jordan or Egypt. I would get an email saying, is the new release out? I'm like, no, it's still <laughs> Sunday here. So, I have six hold on a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me a little bit. It should Can be out I soon. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've had those. We've yeah. actually had those two or three times. It, it did happen. Wow. And it just keeps you moving. It keeps you motivated. Absolutely. Sure. People yeah. are actually enjoying this. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a huge part of it, I bet. Did yeah. you find yourself on, on you know, Sunday afternoon or creeping up on Sunday evening thinking, 
I got to get moving on this thing. Everybody's going to be bugging me, and I haven't got around to it yet. I actually <laughs> tried to avoid that particular situation. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, because I would, you know, really push myself during the week. Sure. It, would, it was nice having the Sunday afternoon off. Yeah. Once you, you, know, you push the release out through the Google Play Store, you give it a couple of hours, then it comes out on its own. Mm. Users get notified. So the only thing I would have had to do was send out the emails, let people know that the new release is out. Just so reassuring these, that a nuclear yeah. uh, reactor gentleman uh, yeah. is proactive in, <laughs> well, uh, in it's, more than one it's thing. It's nice if he can stay on top of reactor safety, he can stay on top of getting the release yes. out. Right? Oh, I mean, qual- <laughs> yeah. quality assurance has definitely gone yeah. into voter quite a bit. Yeah. yeah so I've, I've, I've utilized it. a lot of my previous experience to make sure the platform is, is stable. Sure, right? sure. Yeah. As, no, no, as best as possible. No yes. voter meltdowns. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. There's the joke I was waiting nah, yeah, for. Yeah, very poor. Voter meltdowns, okay. You can do better than that. Yeah. I can. I'm just warming up. <laughs> He's got to get the coffee in him a little more. Um, very cool. And so uh, you said you launched originally at the beginning of the year. Right. You've been iterating every Sunday. Um, and it's just been the one-man show for the most part thus far, yes? Uh, not for the most part. <laughs> oh. It's, it's been the one-man show. Oh, okay. I, I, okay, I should actually probably qualify that. We do yeah. have a program in Voter called the Ambassador Program. Okay. And it's sort of a contract position uh, with Voter where you would actually go out and evangelize about the platform, et cetera. So we've had uh, great success with that in mm. our initial stages. Sure. And we're looking to reactivate that. So if any of your listeners that are in high school or university that are, may be interested, you know, they can visit our website, uh, voter.io, that's V-O-T-R dot I-O. Right. And go to our ambassador program. They can read up about it, shoot me an email, we can talk. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. You got an I.O., did you? Nice. <laughs> the, the com was stolen by was some veterans group down in, like, Iowa or something like that. It was just, uh, I, I wanted to put a bid veterans. on the domain. <laughs> and, you know. Veterans of Yeah, it was something Tennessee. like that. Exactly. And it was Tyrant. just a landing page with a picture from 1995. Uh, it was a pure 1995 uh, website. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's a, This is a whole other topic we should talk about at some point in the podcast. But this the whole idea of trying to, like, Name grab, your grab the dot com and name your your app right so that it, you can get that because you want to get like ideally the dot com and the Twitter handle and the, the Facebook you know, the and Facebook, the, the Instagram the... what you know account yep. and um, and these days it's so hard and and I found in my own kind of startup uh, frustrations in this area that many times when you're looking for the dot com when you go to the page it's either like parked you know with GoDaddy or something right. like this or it just comes up with a you know error you know not found kind of thing even though someone's registered the domain they're obviously doing nothing with it and it makes me think like man there's there should be some some group out there some way to force people like either build something on your on your property or let someone else because there are people who <laughs> that want to wouldn't do it, translate right? very well i, I know i know yeah, let's <laughs> vote on I that i can't Darren. think of a good way to yeah, do yeah i guess we can vote on that you can publish <laughs> yeah, a poll I'll, like I'll, that I think. i'll put up a poll absolutely uh, but, darren uh, is one of our users on voter <laughs> i haven't been as avid a user as I should be, but I definitely have tried it out and uh, well, I mean, been very excited. To, you to use it when out. you need it. Yeah, it's no, fair thing. enough. It's, it's like any other social platform where we sure. try not to push anything on anyone. We do. Sure. We do feel that it's a valuable tool if used properly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, we welcome anybody. Yeah, right. no, that's awesome. That's an um, interesting question for me. Is um, you said you're a sort of a big data guy. So when when does um, like voter when should it not be used? Like when, when, when is it not appropriate to ask a question when we have data on something? Does that make sense? Like instead of saying like uh, we used to sort of sit around and be like uh, Wayne Gretzky scored the most goals. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Well, now we can look. Right. We don't have to have that argument. We just yeah. look, you know. Yeah. So instead of having to sort of do polls, we have the answer to a lot of stuff in data, right? Uh-huh. I think you've already answered the question. I think uh, fact checking is probably not the domain of voter. Right. Anything that's subjective is Right. Anything that can be an opinion rather right. than a right. true or false. Right. So whether yeah. Wayne Gretzky scored you know, a million goals is not an opinion. This right. is a fact or not. Is he the best hockey player that of all time? Opinion. Right. That's There's the vote, question. and right. it's yes. not how much he did. Right. <laughs> so it's all about subjectivity. Yeah. 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 And uh, again, it's, this is not an exclusive problem for voter. This right. is really any, any election. Right. Yeah, any election, and and there are elections coming up in in both Canada and the U.S. We're which very are, yeah. looking forward to those. Hopefully, by the time uh, the uh, we may miss the window for the Canadian elections in terms of growth, it's sure. right around the corner. Sure, uh, we'll probably look at some provincial things later on. Sure, but we're hoping that by the time the U.S. election rolls around, we'll be one of the de facto go to mechanisms to really see what's going on in the public. Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, and that's that kind of 
predictive election data that you would be able to collect can be very valuable to people yeah. as well, right? Uh, I especially, just, sorry oh, to interrupt, no, especially when there's so much doubt being shed on on these polls. Like, for example, how, how really, how well is Donald Trump doing? Right. Right? I mean, all the various polls are giving you data that he's doing pretty well, but really, how is he doing? <laughs> sure. So that's when you go down to the streets. Yeah. Right? But yeah. This, it's a very costly operation for the big data houses out there, like sure. the big pollsters. You know, this I, is free. Donald's voters. coming. <laughs> I read, speaking of Donald Trump, I read a, an article earlier today about, um, now I've got to make sure that I can word this properly if I remember what they said. It was talking about, they were polling people on different political ideas, like should um, Social Security be cut back or, you know, should Medicaid be more highly funded or, whatever, you know, these, these kind of issues in the U.S., in the U.S. And, um, you know, the, the interesting about this particular poll was they would they would say uh, Hillary Clinton said that um, Social Security should be cut back by whatever. Do you agree? Kind of thing, and so that was kind of the A question and the B question that they would ask. You know, the people who got the B question rather than the A question would be, um, you know, Donald Trump said that Social Security should be cut back, and it what they found by asking the exact same questions to people, but using a different political figure as the person who the idea is coming from, um, there were widely varied kind of responses among both Republicans and Democrats depending on who they perceived the, the question coming from, right? And I've, I've seen yeah. that in practice in voter, depending on, again, this is a matter of how you phrase it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the, right. That's one of, the, uh, one of the reasons why I really wanted to add the, f- the feature to attach you know, links to articles, etc. because mm. there's a certain component at some point that's going to be very important, which is fact-checking. Right. Right. So did, did Hillary really say that? Well, right. I don't know. There's, that's what the <laughs> poll says. It must be right. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if you can build some of that in where you're like if you're asking a question or something comes up and you can do some fact checking or there is something static where you can say here's the information now vote or something well, I'm, Techni- I, technical yeah. technical problems are not problems right technical right. problems need to be resolved when they need to be resolved currently like i said with our user base with our the type of polls that are being published this is not a must there are lots of other things that as a startup we need to consider sure you know sure. Uh, if this is not a must then we're not going to do it right now but sure. that being said Technological problems or technical problems are not problems. They're made mm-hmm. to be resolved. Now, let me ask you this. this it sounds like this is your first uh, foray into like building a mobile app and, and throwing it out to the marketplace. Is that accurate to say? No, it's oh, not. Oh, okay. uh, uh, this is actually my fourth startup. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I'm seasoned. I've always, I've always had a steady and stable job, except during one of those startups. Sure. Uh, but that was the only one that actually didn't really... Can, take off and, succe- and succeed. Can it's you only tell four us more it? tries and you'll sure. it. Yeah, can you tell us a bit about those? My brother and I joined uh, a startup out of Ottawa. Uh, it was a, a novel approach to photography in hospitals. Okay, that was that was uh, that was quite good. Yeah, uh, left that one uh, at a win. Okay, and ended photography up photography start- in hospitals. Right, so like new babies. Okay, there you go. I didn't go there. It's not like you're taking you're not taking pictures of people in the burn ward or something. Look at this compound fracture. No, no, no. This, this all yes. came after the SARS scare, right? Okay. So right. you yes. had the traditional photographers coming in after mom gave birth, and they were jumping from one room to the other. Yeah. It was a hazard for hospitals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we had a, a business team develop a di- different solution. My brother and I walked in from the technical side of life. We mm. built a platform from the ground up, deployed it. It was across all of Canada. Wow. Uh, so that, w- that was okay. The company lasted, uh, I think, like three or four more years after I had left, but I walked out again. Um, yeah. On a, on a high note. Good. Awesome. So at that point, I ended up starting my consulting business. Yeah. And that has been going since then. Yeah. During that, uh, the consulting business, again, was my second startup. And thankfully, it's, it's quite successful. We're, we're happy with what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, at one point, I'm, I'm a big musician. Mm-hmm. I'm, music is a huge part of my life. Sure. So I'm very much into classical music on mm-hmm. the piano. I played guitar for quite, well, a little bit. Yeah. And okay. uh, I really got into... Uh, music production oh, okay so cool. house music trance music a lot of electronic music yeah uh, but i always liked the engineering aspect of music you know mm. uh, analyzing it etc so i eventually wanted to start a and uh, build a new video game a music game mm-hmm. cool. uh, using my own music and i noticed at that time this was about four or five years ago yeah uh, there was a lack of music games dedicated to electronic music. And right. That was the, that's a genre that I'm very fond of. Okay. Sure. So I decided to create the music, 
and uh, built a video game to go along with it. Nice. And about a month before release, after we were done with our QA cycles and everything, slipped, uh, got a severe concussion, was in bed for four months, and oh. then running out of funding and, and going under. So you, you just never oh. know. Yikes. <laughs> and that was the only time uh, during which that I did not have a steady and stable source of income. And right. that, that was the downfall of it. So sure. all no you, pun all intended you, again. The downfall. Oh. Wow. How do you catch these things? I, I don't even, I'm just talking here. I catch them from hanging out with this guy. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, if, there's, if there's any piece of advice I can give, yeah. to, give to a startup out there is make sure your bills are paid. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to drown. Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to say don't get a concussion. But I guess maybe that's the second piece Can't really of help advice. that one. Yeah, fair enough. I would have rather not gotten the concussion. Yes, yeah. of course. At least you didn't wake up and the zombie apocalypse was happening. Yes. Like, yeah. I, can, I think I can... Uh, that's all I can last a little bit. You'd probably do okay there, too. Do all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, fair enough. Uh, the, well, the whole reason I brought up the question was just, you know, most startups, the average startup has at least two people kind of building it from the ground up. Right. Often it's two technical people, and then they have to go out and, and scramble to find a business guy um, once they decide to turn their product into a business. Um, mm -hmm. How have you found the process of kind of building a product and having all the weight of that product on your shoulders exclusively? Uh, is it uh, something that you know you prefer to kind of be, be the sole you know, um, decider of what's going to work, what's not going to work? Uh, or do you kind of think to yourself, oh, I wish I had, you know, a partner to kind of take some of the, the pressure off throughout the Yeah, the, the picture of process. Atlas uh, comes yeah. to mind with the world on his back, right? Yeah, that's right. The voter world, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. I'm starting to get a strange vibe from you, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. With these, with these compliments. <laughs> uh, so I was never truly alone in the sense oh. that if I, if I was alone, then I will be going against voter. Right. On every single large or small feature, or yeah. even changing our corporate identity about a month ago, Yeah, all of these things were decided by other people. I didn't right. make the decision on hardly anything in voter. Okay. So, except for the overall features list, sure. to which there have been many additions and removals. Okay. So, you just ask so the questions, right? right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what do you want to see? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, in a our, sense, you have multiple co-founders with you that, that participate. I really the consider process. the users as a huge part of voter. I know a lot of them now sure. on, a, on a personal level. You know, we, we about... Three or four months ago, we started uh, exchanging emails on a personal level. People I've never met in my entire life. And every right. once in a while, they'll shoot me an email, uh, an email and tell me, I really like the new logo. Or, man, this, you got to change this. This sucks. Or, hmm. oh, my phone crashed. What would you do to my phone? <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> sure, sure. So I, that's, I've never been alone in that sense. Uh, hmm. That being said, having to juggle so many balls at the same time, can be very overwhelming and at certain times you know you just kind of take a step back and say i really need a vacation mm, and then you can sure. drink, drink coffee and you're good to go again. <laughs> yeah. but eat a kilo of broccoli or a kilo of broccoli yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. for your listeners that's a previous joke that we had yeah that was uh, i think that was during the sound check eat. wasn't it yeah. yeah we were talking about he likes to eat a lot of broccoli um that's no that's great um, and it sounds like the more we talk about this, the more I'm thinking to myself, you know, this sounds like a great platform for other startups um, to use, you know, if they set up their own um, district, district mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, and then hooked in their user base to, uh, to that district um, just to get that constant source of iterative feedback. Um, so the second part of yeah. your comment is the key here. Yeah. Because especially for a startup, if you create your own district, but you don't have people to vote on it, then it's not, it's not valuable to you. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is where it would play into our growth, and we're more than happy to talk to any of the startups that are interested, kind of direct them towards how they can market their own district, how they can gain more users. Mm. But you're absolutely correct. I mean, this is really what the platform can do think it, of university students who mm -hmm. want to you know create study groups yeah things like that i mean mm -hmm. it, it's it's very viable in that scenario as well yeah you could pose like uh, mock you know exam questions to one another for you know studying for the big right. test coming up um what um is there a way that say if i create a district in voter um is there a way that i could you know send a link to that district through other means like i could post that through twitter or on my website or something like that to direct people to S that Feedback some of, the, some of these yeah. platforms, aside from Facebook, don't actually allow you to deep link into the platform. I don't want to get too okay. technical here. Okay, fair but enough. But what you can do is actually post on Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest or whatever you want. We, yep. we are fully, fully social in that aspect. Sure. That you have created a district, mm. right? All your followers okay. will get notified. Yeah. And then it's literally two steps to get that to that district. Launching the application and visiting the district. Okay. Also, as the owner of the district, 
uh, you can send invitations from voter itself. You can oh, again okay. use your entire contacts list or existing voter users. Okay. So that's that's another thing. If any of your if any of your buddies have simply joined voter and you want to invite them, that's one one method. Sure. You want to send them a text message or an email, absolutely you can do that. So yeah. you can invite them to join through I, that method. I'm just thinking of startups that might already have, you know, significant group of followers on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever and they they want to get the voter, they want to connect them to voter <laughs> for their feedback, right? Yeah, it's not so, it's not uh, difficult. Yeah. And if any again, like I said, we're super flexible. If any of these startups investigate voter and they really see value in it and they want to see some type of enhancement that from their previous experience, yeah. Let me know. Excellent. As as you talked about uh, earlier some milestones. Do you feel comfortable sharing with us some of those milestones that you guys have set for yourself? Oh, you might have to sign an NDA for that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> sure. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh-huh. So again, our growth has been uh, our, our biggest problem, so to speak. Yeah. But that's not really a problem for me personally for a few reasons. One, I'm happy with the growth the way it is up until now because mm-hmm. I've only gone out of quote unquote open beta recently so sure. i'm happy with that mm-hmm. now the platform is stable i'm happy to advertise it and that's why we brought on dimitro right uh that being said the milestone that i would like to see in the next few months is to get over uh over ten thousand users okay. and really make voter an actual viable polling platform from a statistical standpoint right right and yeah. i i personally don't think it's going to take us too much to get there yeah our curves are all upwards mm-hmm. right uh our participation rates are ridiculously high. Hmm. Now, I'd like to define what a participation is. It's not simply launching the application. Right. Any type of participation in voter is going to be either publishing a poll, voting on something, creating a relationship with someone. Sure. Posting a comment. Those are all uh, quantified from my side of life. Yeah. And I, I haven't done too much research on this, but I will hazard a guess and say that we have one of the highest participation uh, rates in any social platform. Interesting. Uh, we yeah. are at over 50% monthly frequently. Wow. 50% of our existing user base use voter every single month. Sure. We have very, very active users that will use it multiple times a day. Wow. Right? Yeah. And that's a big deal. I mean, d- keeping people on your on your platform or uh, keeping them coming back is a huge issue for anyone who's building right. any sort of application. We, right? And so. again, I think it's because of the interaction I've had with these users and really asking them what they want, what they don't want, that they know if they have a problem, they're going to come back. And not only that, now the product that's in their hands is yep. to their liking. Right. Right? Yeah, so they have some ownership in it, right? They do. And uh, you're allowing their voice to be heard, so it's just a matter of rewarding them. For, exactly. It sounds weird for, <laughs> for letting them uh, express their votes. Their opinions, right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and that's, that's what always goes through, goes through my head. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. You know, making sure that our existing and loyal users are happy, and now our next target is massive growth. That's where we want to go, and, uh, and, that, and that's where I kind of, you know, yeah. Stood up and said, all right, this is not my domain. Time to bring somebody in. <laughs> I really like how Absolutely. you've sort of framed it in that uh, it's not you are the co you're, you're the founder, but you're a co-founder because everybody has uh, that has touched it has had a part in it. And, and yeah, it's and a really it's, neat way to. Think it's about not it. lip service either. Sure. It's, it's absolutely true. I mean, yeah. every single one of these guys is I consider a friend. Sure. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's cool. So you're getting a lot of Christmas cards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> they don't know where I live. <laughs> Christmas polls, maybe. Christmas, Christmas polls. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we missed last season. We weren't out yet, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe this season we're going to get a lot of Santa pictures, I think. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Maybe this someone, hat or this hat. someone will post the North poll P-O-L-L no never wow. mind that was a you stretch I'm sorry you did it I'm sorry um, our audience well, members are note, rolling their eyes on that note I think we should move into our <clears throat> <laughs> when I clear my throat that's Steven's signal to do the thunder noise for the lightning round yes. the lightning round so we hit we hit, the lightning round is just when we ask a bunch of kind of quicker questions it's kind of like kind of like the debaters on cbc radio is yeah, that where you get some, it from Very something much like, like that. that something like that never heard of them yeah it's it's <laughs> it's filler is what it is no 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 so we'll throw some questions at you usually about 10 questions or so and uh yeah just uh let us know what you think sure go <laughs> ahead. So i'll start off with yeah. you mentioned going on vacation where would you go if you could go on vacation starting as soon as this podcast is over you're walking out of here to where spain spain yeah no oh. thought. It was just right Spain. on the tip of his brain. Excellent. Going to Spain. Why Spain? Food, beaches. 
Okay. My two favorite things. Yeah. Right? I like the order you have it in. <laughs> Beaches. Food, man. Yep. That's great. Um, my question for you is, what thought uh, makes you jump out of bed in the morning? What What gets you excited when you wake up and say, I want to Ex- go Excited this day? or uh, almost going to a heart, heart arrest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, At the one, beginning, yeah. I frequently had dreams that voter was crashing all the time. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> the I remember, I remember yeah. the first time we got a one-star review. Oh. Turned out to be a spam review, luckily. Oh, okay. So, uh, but uh, anyway, that <laughs> yeah. was that was a disaster day for me. I, wow. wanted, I wanted to burst so, in tears. So it's jumping out of bed, making sure everything is still working properly. First thing I do in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Steven? You uh, you mentioned earlier that you had um, uh, sort of an epiphany over the comment section. What other assumptions did you make on early uh, early on that you thought, okay, this is the way we're going to do it, and then we're sort of surprised to find out later, oh no, we should have done it this way. As, uh, as I mentioned, I didn't even want to have a comments section. But yeah. the amount of negative backlash that I received, even from family and friends, the people that <laughs> quote unquote yeah. love me, yeah. right? it was very <laughs> negative, right? They're like, sure. you really need to have a comments section. And in <laughs> fact, I put the comments section three days prior to release, which is something an engineer should never do. Right. Ever. Right. But you know what? It came out and there were only two bugs in it that were resolved in the first two weeks and it's been steady ever since. That's awesome. So that's, that's one moment where I really had to pivot. The other one was uh, branding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had both good and bad feedback about branding. And I always thought about branding in a very specific way yeah. uh, that you don't necessarily have to have an attractive logo as long as it's recognizable. Right. right. A lot of people, our, our color theme is uh, built around green. And I, I made that conscious choice. Yeah. Uh, not only because green represents democracy, et cetera, mm-hmm. uh, and public opinion, mm-hmm. but also because it's the only color that's not taken. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Think about it. Yeah, if, you, yeah. if you're looking at the Pinterest logo, if you're looking at the Twitter logo, you can recognize Recognize yeah. that this is associated with Twitter instantly from the color. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot right. of red and blue. And this out is there. something mm-hmm. that yeah. we I wanted to do with our corporate identity. Sure. So those are all fine and dandy, but our logo was really bad, apparently. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when uh, when I um, commissioned a few designers to redo our corporate identity, I published the results on Voter, and the people selected our current logo. Oh, okay. Very cool. So, we, so that whole Britney Spears shaving her head, bad publicity isn't good publicity. or it, any it, I, comes, I actually, I actually don't know logo. what you're talking yeah. about. Oh, I'm not too big into pop culture. That, with that, that yeah. was years ago. That was a while yeah, back. Uh, well, and you should know, though, speaking, just speaking of logos, tangentially here, when we were putting together a logo for TSP, for the podcast, for TSP mm-hmm. Weekly, uh, we, Steve and I each came up with a bunch of different options, and we, we put it to the people and, and went with... Uh, if we had voter, mm-hmm. then it would have been that much yeah, easier. I think we had to do it on Survey Monkey or something, but... Uh, anyway, my question for you, my next question is, uh, what is one of your hidden talents? I think you've hinted at a few things maybe early in the podcast. I'm a proficient but... piano player, I would say. Okay. Uh, cool. Languages come relatively easy to me. Okay. Uh, and I think it's all, it all has something to do with acoustics. All right. Uh, you I, did you mention like classical piano? You do classical yeah, piano. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I would looking at you. I wouldn't think now. There's a man who plays classical piano. Yeah, but would yeah. you also paint me as a as an engineer? Well, you know? not necessarily. <laughs> right? but, but that's believable. That's more believable. You think of the classical pianist as somebody kind of with dainty fingers and uh, you know wearing the. the tuxedo up on stage. I, I do yeah. okay. The engineer okay, part, for fair. sure. You've constructed quite a torso. So that's <laughs> <laughs> it's all engineering, right? It's, it's engineering somehow. That's, that's funny. I, I right. agree. That's why yeah. I love uh, the sport of bodybuilding. I yeah. think it is human engineering. Yeah, Absolutely. But so, yeah, um, class, classical music is definitely my, my forte. Okay. I enjoy it quite a bit. That's awesome. What, yeah. um, what is your unfair advantage when it comes to voter? Why are you guys the voting platform to go with, though, as opposed to like Facebook's poll or... Why are you, what's your unfair advantage? Our social circles, social interaction uh, mm-hmm. is, is one big thing. Mm-hmm. Being able to create your own district and white labeling voter to actually make it into an agnostic platform mm-hmm. is another really big feature. That's we, great we, that second one, we haven't exercised it, but hopefully Stephen can come in with something. We can do that. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure. Sounds good. Oh, I got to come up with another question now. Um, uh, how about this? Fill in the blank. I'm secretly terrified of what? Failure. Okay. Man, I'm, I'm very blunt, by the way. <laughs> that gets you no, up that's in the morning. awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Most people say something like spiders, but uh, no, that works. Yeah. No, <laughs> so that's fine. Nice. Spiders are fine. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. They're constructors, too. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm paying for three top-notch employees tomorrow for your company. Um, who are you hiring? Do you need uh, sales Apart guys? from Dimitri, you've already got him. So. Yeah, you got your employee number one. So who are employee number two, three, and four? Yeah. I'll let you know when I need them. 
<laughs> okay. We're, I don't need anybody right now. Yeah. So yeah. do you anticipate needing sales, more yes. engineers? No, more, no, no, no more like engineers. Like what's the growth of uh, – you're not yeah. there yet, but yeah. what's, what's the th- next uh, employee you're going to add? I think technically we're fine. Yeah. Uh, we would have to focus most of our resources towards brand recognition, growth, yeah, user getting more users. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Um, all right, my last question for you: Give one piece of advice for new startups in five words or less. Don't quit your job. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's nice. Yeah. Sorry, did you? You ask could even five? say day job. No, I was counting the words he did there. Oh, no, don't fair quit enough. your job. You could say don't quit your day job. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Are you, ca- are you counting don't as one or two words? Ooh, uh, just one. It is a contracted word, after all. <laughs> yes. Yes. We need one, to get. We need to get one of the half. rules. We'll, well, I'm, I'm still at five, right? <laughs> yeah. Fair Do enough. not quit your job. Yeah, yeah. that's all good. You're straight. Is it? Um. So yeah. here's my final question. You have the power to change one thing in the world. Cancer, hunger, climate change. What are you going to do? Calorie-free pizza, I think. Ooh. <laughs> no. Calorie-free uh, pizza. I would, I'd be done with that. Yeah. Give cancer. me two slices. I would, I would choose. That was actually a question on voter, and I think I, uh, I, think I chose cancer. I think I would mm-hmm. limit, try to eliminate cancer. Sure. That's nice. Yeah. Cancer's a big one. Um, and our bonus question is toilet paper, fold or scrunch? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you're taking care of business oh. and you're grabbing a piece of toilet paper, do you scrunch it in a ball or do you fold no, it No, you got to fold it. <laughs> okay, fold. Okay, perfect. Fold? That's you got to fold? He's an engineer. Yeah. Better coverage. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> See, we heard just the opposite with the scrunch. Uh, Our previous from... enge- engineering person on, yes. on the podcast had said scrunch was more efficient, but I'm, I'm a folder myself, so that's good to know. That's very See, good to know. A, this is a poll I've got to put up on Voter, This actually, is a poll that so, was yeah. on Voter. Uh, was it on it voter? really was. Yeah. Did I put it on Voter? No, I don't already. think so. I, I, I think he may have been posted anonymously. I'm going to have to go and look at those results because uh, we've asked a lot of people. We should contribute our past uh, podcast guests. Um, yeah, look under look under humor. Them, you yeah. might you might find that. Poll. All right, I'll yeah. check that out. Absolutely, <laughs> very cool. Um, well, listen, uh, we're just at the wrap up point here. Um, maybe I think you mentioned your website uh, already earlier in the podcast, but um, are there any other places that we can find you or follow you online? What's going on with voter and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, definitely. So as, as I mentioned, our website is uh, www.voter.io, V-O-T-R. Mm-hmm. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash voter app, V-O-T-R, A-P-P. Same handle on Twitter. Okay, uh, voter app. At voter app, correct. Mm-hmm. And then we're uh, voter.inc on Instagram and Pinterest. Okay. And you can personally follow me at Faez Voter, F-A-Y-E-Z, V-O-T-R, okay. on Twitter. On Twitter. Yeah. Awesome. So Great. we'll put some links to those locations when we post the podcast so people can find you guys uh, Great. fairly Wonderful. easily. That's great. Um, and uh, in the meantime, is there anything kind of on the horizon that we can look forward to with Voter, uh, just building the user base more or less? And No, yeah. I've actually started working on one and a uh, new major feature that I would like to discuss internally with, with Dimitro oh, okay. in the next few days, and that is... Uh, implementing some type of gamification within Voter. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. And uh, I'm most likely going to, once I build the idea a little bit more in my head, most likely I'll publish a poll about it and really gauge public's opinion. Sure. So one idea that I had is that for brand new users, for example, let's say you have voted five times and you receive a, a certain badge mm-hmm. and that would give you the reward to, for example, boost a cer- certain poll to all the way to the top of the list. Right. So that's the type of reward system that I'm, I'm currently building in my yeah. head. Uh, I'd like to work out a few more rewards, but mm-hmm. I think that's the direction that we're going to go and really make this social platform a lot more social. Sure. Yeah. It's at least worth experimenting with, for sure, see Definitely. Uh, how it affects participation. Yeah, I think there's a yeah. lot of uh, opportunity there for you to, to have some fun and learn some stuff and maybe make some money, too. And yeah. the reason why I came up with this is because I've been getting a lot of feedback about it being a fun platform. And I don't want the fun to run out. Right. Right. <laughs> Last thing you want is for the fun to run out. Um, excellent. Speaking of which, our fun has run out. Yeah, it's, it's about that time, guys. So, uh, well, let's throw out some thank yous here. So, uh, first of all, we want to thank our special guest, uh, Mr. Fayez Alfara from Voter, for joining us on the show. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. And uh, thanks to the Communitech Hub for letting us record here once again in their beautiful Blue beam. colored beam room, Blue yeah. Beam room. And uh, thanks to you, our listeners, for joining us on another uh, another episode of TSP Weekly. Please feel free to send us your comments, questions, criticisms, feedback. 
Our uh, email address is feedback at tspweekly.com, or you can send us a message on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at tspweekly, and possibly in the future, you can send us some feedback through voter as well. <laughs> we'll have to put up a district and uh, Hopefully sooner rather than do. later. That's right. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, so for myself, Darren Conley, my co-host, Stephen Campbell, and, and our guest, uh, Faya Zalfire from Voter, thank you so much for joining us here today, everyone, and we'll see you all next week. Mm-hmm.